Hey guys, I just clipped this out of one of my live videos the other night. I thought it was so important. I wanted to just clip it out, share it with you all. This is about how the Biden administration, the Yellen Treasury, is artificially injecting quantitative easing into our markets, artificially inflating it up. So it's all fake. And this is how they've been sneakily doing this behind almost everybody's eyes. It's pretty crazy. Um, it, not 100%, but I'm pretty sure this is how they're doing it because nothing else makes sense with the market. But anyways, hope you enjoy the video. Watch as I go through it and then make your own decision afterwards. Thanks. All right. So this came out just in the last couple of days. See, uh, July 2024, this report by Hudson Bay Capital. And they have a pretty wild theory that actually makes a whole lot of sense as to why the stock market has been able to stay up so strongly despite the fact the economy sucks. And what their theory is, and it's that the, they've actually uh, initiated quantitative easing through the sale of T-bills. Um, and it's, it's a long, long report and they have a lot behind it. But the crazy part is this. So they have, um, they're basically saying that one of the ways it's acting as stimulus, let me find it here, is that it's, it's, uh, keeping down the 10 year rate on treasury acting as a preemptive rate cut. And that by doing so, it is stimulating the stock market, which is a wild theory. But when you read it, it actually makes a whole lot of sense. And they believe that through these T-bill sales, and this is all in this report, and I will share this, uh, I'll share this link in my description at the end of the video so you guys can click and read it. But um, basically Yellen, has been selling all these T-bills from the Treasury Department since uh, 2020. And they believe there's been about a stimulus built up of about $800 billion. It's almost a trillion dollars in capital that's being held right now and using to offset the, the rates and also can be used as uh, an influx of cash. And they're holding it right now. And this was enabled to really be ramped up. Remember last year when Kevin McCarthy made the deal in the house with Biden that they would have an uncapped, um, uh, they wouldn't have to go through the debt, debt limit negotiations and would have uncapped for two and a half years. And so that set free Yellen to just start selling uh, T-bills like crazy. Okay. And so she's been selling, 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 and they're using this as quantitative easing. Well, here's the, here's the deal that that deal starts running out in 2025. And so they're coming into a reckoning. Now, this is one of the craziest parts is that they believe based on uh, all the math that let's go look at uh, real quick, the, the uh, tenure. So whenever the tenure gets up by f to, to around five, it's really scary for the markets. Okay, because it becomes so valuable that everybody starts jumping over there and jumping out of the stock market. But right now it's right around four. Okay, and, it, and it's been continuing to go down these last few days. And uh, at one point earlier this year, it, it almost hit five and the market just tumbled, but it's been going down ever since. What they believe is that this uh, holding, this, this back way of doing quantitative easing is keeping this down by at least 0.5. So uh, 50 basis points, that's huge. That's absolutely huge. Cause that means if that, if that were true, it means this spring would the, the rate would have hit 5.5 uh, and that would have just completely led to a stock market crash. So this is pushing up the markets. It's, it's preventing a stock market crash by, by keeping rates low. Cause if you guys, know how the markets work the the bond the uh, bonds actually set interest rates even more so than the fed okay so the bonds are where the real interest rates are and the fed they dictate other stuff but the bonds is really the leader all right so they believe once this starts selling off which they estimate is going to have to happen either somewhere uh, the rest of this year or or if yellen can somehow hold off 
beginning of next year. They'll have to do it in Q1. It, but if this starts happening, the wildest part about this is that this actually lines up with everything I've been saying time-wise, and I didn't even know this was going on. It just, it just was a feeling. And a lot of people are saying they really feel like this, this could happen. But at the same time, it shows that they are uh, artificially inflating the markets leading up to the election. It's, it's basically proof of it, but they're not announcing it to the world. And they're also, this again shows how <laughs> Pal and Yellen are not working together. Now I'm sure Pal knows about this, but Pal has been able to let the Fed keep rates high and do quantitative tightening and a lay off quantitative easing without, uh, uh, with Yellen being able to prop it up this way. So there's a whole new thing they've created. This has never happened before. And it's absolutely wild. So they believe that once this selling off happens, 50 basis points immediately is what the tenure will jump up. That my friends uh, will create a massive sell off in the markets. And if things are already uh, worse at that point, which I believe they will be over the next few months, uh, things are going to get crazy now, but it would also make sense if Pal is feeling the pressure to cut sooner than later. Uh, now with September, since we got through July without a cut, this would make even more sense if he feels the need or they push to cut in September because they might know this is coming and they're going to start flooding back into the market, this 800 billion they're holding on. And anyways, this, this is a wild report and um, I want to thank, uh, I can't remember who it was on Twitter, showed it to me and I haven't had much time to go through this whole thing. I've only had an hour, uh, but it's it's wild guys. I mean, it's it, this is absolutely wild um, that they pulled this off and they're doing it behind our backs, but it was made again possible because of that terrible debt deal Kevin McCarthy made and we all said at the time, like, this is nuts. How can you do this? But now, now we're seeing like they, there's a lot more going on uh, than, than we thought. So um, let me see real quick. I wanted to uh, read one part here. Uh, here, here. However, we expect the surfeit of bills to be termed out eventually when the market starts to look forward to over one trillion of bills being termed out into notes and bonds. We expect it to temporarily raise long-term interest rates by 50 basis points, prompting a meaningful repricing of risk assets before settling back in a permanent 30 basis point increase. So they believe there's going to be a jump 50 basis points immediately, and then it's going to settle, but it'll still be 30 basis points ahead of where we are now, which that's a, that's a big deal guys. Uh, similarly, uh, I've jumped ahead. I jumped back too far. Sorry. Um, Frequent use of QE since the global financial crisis has shown a light on the eroding barrier between monetary and fiscal policy. Open the door for tools like ATI. That's what they're calling this. Interaction between policy choices from the Fed and Treasury remain a fruitful area of study for market participants. Anyways, this is well worth a look for uh, some of you quants out there. But uh, it, it's it's wild. This is like 40 pages. So I really haven't had the time to really go into it. But this would explain why we are seeing all-time highs in the market despite the highest rate increases in history, um, uh, a really bad job market despite what they keep saying. It's it's all part-time jobs. It's all the inf things should have caught up by now is the point. The housing market is a mess. I'm not saying we should have had a full-on crash yet. I don't think we're there, but we also the the way the stock market has risen in the past year especially since october it, it's it's beyond it's beyond comprehension like in making any sense at all it, it just makes absolutely no sense and we're getting more and more warnings about being in a bubble like right here microsoft warning investors this morning of a gross slowdown in cloud computing until the second half of 2025 they all overbuilt their infrastructure without knowing how to profit from it exactly like 2000. How do you think Nvidia will fare when everyone starts canceling orders? What they're saying right now is that with AI, all this uh, all this tech they've been uh, pushing in so much right now, okay, they've, they've been pushing in so 
much growth into it and they still haven't figured out how to monetize everything. Uh, that's exactly what a bubble is. So now that they've built all this infrastructure, now it's time to figure out how to monetize it, which means the growth aspect of the 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 um, the investment into the tech itself is going to significantly slow down. That's going to continue to hurt Microsoft and Nvidia will be the one that hurts the most on this once they start uh, they start pulling back because that's the one powering everything. Um, oops, jumped ahead, uh, jumped back there. Sorry, and also. I had one more thing I wanted to pull up. So this is how crazy the stock market is. We went from fear, we skipped neutral, went just to greed just today. All because the NASDAQ is up 100, 450 points. So anyways, just telling you guys, like now that we know what Yellen's been pulling off behind our backs, uh, behind everybody's back, it makes so much more sense why this market continues to go this way. And until those start selling off, it's the market's probably going to stay propped up. It's going to be very hard to break it because they've built something to keep pumping it up, even with all the other ways they used to do it, uh, unbeknownst to us. Now, here's one of the problems, however. This is temporary. They cannot keep this up. One of the reasons is the debt in America is so high that they're running out of opportunity to do this. Uh, and then... They can't print because of inflation. So that's another reason they had to do it this way, which I told you guys before, they can't do QE because that just prints money straight into the economy, which would raise inflation. So that's how they figured out this other way. It's very tricky. It's very smart and devious, but it does have to end. And so that's that's what we're gonna be watching, um, see what that happens. So anyways, just absolutely crazy, absolutely crazy. Um